Hello, uh, good morning. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Once again, this is Santos Capellan Jr. Wishing you a good day. Now, uh, again, if you are new to my channel, please subscribe and you can also click the notification bell so that you will be notified if a new tutorial is available in the channel. Okay. Now, uh, today what I'm going to do is uh, respond to one of my subscribers' request. Now, uh, actually, he is requesting me to uh, show him how to generate uh, software points in your control logic program. Okay. Now, uh, actually, in my previous tutorials, I already created one control logic for twin exhaust fan. Okay. Now, uh, I just tried to rearrange or edit my control logic program so that it will be easy to understand. Okay. Now, uh, as I said, when your control logic becomes uh, long or you put so many control logic there, it will become complicated, okay? So my advice is you have to break it down to a manageable uh, short code, okay? Now, for this tutorial, uh, actually what I did is to separate the EF1, EF2 start to stop command logic, okay? So I put it in a rectangle rectangle okay this rectangle uh, shown by uh, this uh, broken line or dashed line now so this ef1 start stop command logic is this okay so the first triangle here okay so my this logic will just uh, start and stop the fan as per the uh, sequence operation uh, stated in this uh, program okay so uh, at the moment i have a very simple uh, sequence of operation for the start stop of the fan. Now it will become complicated if we if I will inject more conditions for the starting of the fan. Let's say if I will uh, edit my sequence of operation and add the sequencing, then your control logic program will become more complicated. Okay, so I don't want to complicate these things for the new uh, or for the beginners. Uh, so that they will be easily understand the logic, okay? So I don't think I need to explain again this start stop command. I already simulated this uh, during my last uh, tutorial, okay? Now, uh, as, per the uh, as per the request of my subscriber, I'm doing the software point generation, okay? So this software point generation uh, it will generate run hours, then runtime alarms. And of course, there are so many uh, software points involved in this uh, twin exhaust fan control. Okay, so I'll just doing uh, run hours or the runtime accumulation of the equipment to show you how to do it. Okay, now here, what I have here, uh, I introduced alarm block. So this is at the alarm block. Okay. So this is the alarm block, edit block alarm. Okay, so this is the alarm block. Likewise, uh, you have to properly identify the block. Okay, so the identifier, you have to fill in the proper identifier for this block. Okay, so use a descriptive block, then you can always put the description. Now the purpose of the description is for the next engineer that will try to maintain the program, okay? Now, I think uh, it is already clear that this is the purpose of documentation. Good uh, programming practice, okay? So that is the alarm block. Then, uh, okay, I have here one binary output block, okay? So it will create an output uh, binary, but this time this is not, uh, this will not be binded to a physical point. So this is a software point, okay? Now, uh, let me make it clear. When I say physical points, it is associated or it is defined in one of the I.O. modules that we use in our DDC. When I say software points like BO or BI, it is not, uh, it will not be binded in the I.O. modules or in the controller. It will be just plain software points, okay? Now you can use this, uh, you can bind this to your BMS graphics, okay? Now, what else, uh, what are the other blocks that I introduce here? Now, I introduce this one. So, this one is the operator block. Okay, operator. So, what is this? Greater or equal. Okay, so greater or equal. 
uh, operator block. So I have used it. Then I introduce this uh, OR gate. Okay, now for the OR gate, just to remind you for the beginners, the truth table for this is any input, use, as you can see here, this OR block have two inputs and one output. Any of the input become one, then the output will be one. Okay, so both input zero, then the output is zero. Both inputs are one, then the output is one. Okay, so that is an OR gate truth table. Now I introduce here one, uh, this block. So let me see, this is an PVB. Okay, I think this is parameter value binary. Okay, so parameter value binary. Now, uh, the identifier for this one is EF1 RP reset. Okay, so if you want to reset the runtime accumulated, then you have to make this uh, binary to one. Okay, so that is the PBB, parameter value binary. Now, uh, okay, what else? Then I introduce this one, parameter value real, okay? So the, here, the initial value is 500, okay? Now, uh, let me explain. The, this logic will generate the run hours of the equipment, okay? Now, this runtime accumulator, okay, let me explain this again. Runtime accumulator, there are two... Uh, inputs okay now there are two inputs the i and the rs okay input and reset now uh, here as you can see here if you will not click the public then during binding of the graphics in our uh, sbo system this will not appear because you did not make it public so if you go, if you think you are going to use this block in binding of the objects you prepared, let's say in the uh, BMS graphics, then you have to make it public, okay? So this is like a variable which is public. It will appear and it, you can use it during your binding in the BMS graphics and other uh, works in the system, okay? So just make it public so it will appear during binding time, okay? Now, uh, this runtime accumulator, okay, now what are the inputs that I used here, okay? So my input, so that I can accumulate the run hours of the equipment, I use two inputs, okay? Then I use one OR gate here. So what are the inputs? So the, my input is EF1 run status, okay? So EF1 run status, meaning uh, if I have given the command, to start it, then I receive the run status, then it will trigger this runtime accumulator to start. Okay, so when this uh, output of the OR becomes one, meaning because of the run status, then this runtime accumulator will start accumulating the run hours. Okay, now here the unit, you can set it to zero, one, and two. Okay. So zero, one, and two. Uh, one is for minutes. Two is for seconds. Uh, okay, zero is for hours. Zero is for hours. Uh, one for minutes and two for seconds. Okay. So when it is when it is zero, uh, the unit. So per uh, every hour it will accumulate. Let's say it started then after one hour it will count one so there will be one uh, uh, the output will be one after two hours the output will be two okay now if you will make it one then the output will be in minutes so every minute it will give one next minute two next minute three okay if you will make it two then every second okay now by default it will be zero because run hours uh you cannot find it uh, in HBAC that you will make the run hours in minutes, okay? So it's always uh, hours. Now, when are you going to use minutes? Okay, now when I'm checking my logic, I am setting it to minutes because I don't want to wait uh, one hour just to see the output of the runtime accumulator, okay? So during testing time, 
offline testing you can set to one so that it will be only in minute okay so take note of that okay so you can change the unit from zero hours one two minutes then two two seconds okay so let's leave it to hours okay now uh so the input that will start this accumulator is the uh, run status of ef1 or the airflow status why i'm using the airflow because sometimes uh, let's say uh, the mep uh, the facility management they will say okay uh, i need to observe something in this exhaust fan i will run it first in uh, manual operation so uh, our uh, runtime accumulator will still continue to count the run hours even the equipment is running in manual so we were uh, using the airflow because during manual operation if the fan is working it will always give an airflow status so when there is airflow status that is also one of the inputs that we will use so that our runtime accumulator will try to measure the run hour of the equipment okay i, I guess it will be clear uh, for you the purpose of this uh, input for runtime accumulator now another input here is the rs now this rs is the uh, reset okay so if you try to make the value of this pbb parameter value binary to one then it will reset the accumulated run hours then it will go back to zero or the output will go back to zero okay then it will start from there to count again okay so this one this runtime um, reset uh, this one you have to bind this in your bms graphics that you can reset the runtime now uh, the runtime alarm you can generate the runtime alarm if uh, let's say i am using here a parameter value real now this is my runtime set point okay this runtime set point uh, can be given to you by the uh, maintenance engineer he will say okay this uh, ef1 if it runs uh, 500 hours then that's the time you will raise the maintenance alarm so that our maintenance people can start the maintenance of the equipment okay so when it reaches 500 because you are checking the output of runtime accumulator you are checking you have an operator here if the output is greater than or equal 500 then raise this alarm then this binary output raise it also to one okay if one runtime alarm then this one also if one runtime alarm okay this is alarm block this is a binary uh, oh, binary output block okay then the same uh, procedure for ef2 runtime alarm okay so this is how are you going to create or generate your uh, software points in your control logic program i hope i have given uh, the idea to the guy who is asking for this uh, uh, software points generation thank you for uh, raising comments and asking query so i can always respond to any question that is being raised in my tutorial now uh, as we go on as we as i uh, i will be posting several tutorials several control logic program you will be able to see more software points generation so just be patient wait for other tutorials then maybe in that tutorial your query will be answered okay so i think this is enough for today uh, i hope i have given you an ample idea how are you going to generate the software points in your control logic program again software points uh, it is not associated with physical cable or you are not going to bind it in one of the io modules that you use okay and then physical points are the points associated with cable or this one are the points to be binded in the io module that you use for control and monitoring the said equipment okay so thank you very much for watching this uh, video clip
And again, Santos Capellan Jr. always saying, God bless us all and bye for now. <laughs>